Meet my friend William Baines. He's a biochemist, he's at MIT, he can play the guitar like nobody's business, and he also looks a little bit like a leprechaun. Well, in 2004, he wrote an article, a book about biotechnology from A to Z. Then in 2004 again, many chemistries could be used to build living systems. The idea here is to maybe life is, can be based on another sol solvent, not just water. And then in 2008, venture capital and European biotechnology industry. Well, he's got many interests, biotechnology and astrobiology. In 2014, he wrote an article called, What Do We Think Life Is? A Simple Illustration and Its Consequences. Then, in more recently, 2017, in collaboration with Dirk schultz makuch he wrote a book about cosmic zoo, complex life on many worlds. He's the kind of guy who thinks that complex life will be everywhere in the universe, and so we should try to figure it out. Matter of fact, 2018, time to consider search strategies for uh, complex life on exoplanets. Well, I sat down with him in Washington, Seattle, Washington, and I asked him, are we alone? My name is William Baines. What do you do? I do lots of different things, but um, my background is as a biochemist, and so I'm interested in the chemistry of life and, from a practical point of view, how it goes wrong. Wow. All right, and are we alone in the universe? Well, that depends what you mean by alone. I mean, is there life somewhere else? Out of, what, 400 million stars, most of which have planets, hundreds of millions of galaxies, is there another planet out there somewhere that has something like life on it? I would think that seems likely. Um, and you're only talking about our galaxy, 400 billion stars. Well, no, I think our galaxy and all the other galaxies anywhere in the universe, is there life on it? Probably. So, so um, it's observable universe or the entire yeah. universe? You're talking? Observable universe. And are viruses alive? Oh, viruses, viruses, goodness, our viruses are alive. This is one that... Well, that do you include viruses in your weed? Um, viruses are part of Earth life. Um, okay, well, then you do. So, but, you know, um, prions are part of Earth life. Um, dead wood is part of Earth life, in the sense that it wouldn't be here if there wasn't Earth life. Coal is part of Earth life. So, you know, our viruses, living things, they do the things we think living things should do. Um, I used to think definitely yes, and then I thought definitely no, and now I'm swinging back towards yes again. Um, I think this, uh, but, but asking whether viruses are alive really is asking what do you mean by life? Right. And so I'm, what do you mean by life? I'm not sure I know what I mean by life. So why um, do you think we are not alone if you don't know what the word life means? I said I'm not sure what I mean. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the, the, the a characteristic feature of life, this isn't a definition and it's not an exhaustive list, but a characteristic feature is coded replication. So we've got information inside us, and that describes what we should be and what the next generation of us should be. So if I eat a banana, there's something inside me that says some bits of the chemicals in that banana should be me, and some bits should not be me, and some bits should be turned into me. And that's different for me than any other phenomenon on the planet. And that's a characteristic and, dif and importantly characteristic feature of life. Well, this, there was some sort of transition, and it's a very big, big time slice. About, and this is from memory, because this isn't really my field of expertise, but from memory, there are, um, there are traces in caves in South Africa of human cultural groups that were um, making pigments and um, by collecting rocks from a number of different places, collecting shells to grind them up in, and, and manufacturing stuff. And you think that's an important step towards building a radio telescope? I think that's, that's putting something together that never existed in nature, and deliberately going out and collecting stuff, and to do it. Not just saying, hey, here's a rock, this is about the right shape, I'll crack this nut with it, but thinking, what do I need? Having an imagination to think, what do I need here in my hand that I don't have now, I can now go out and get put together. I think once you've got that, the path from there to flint axes, to farming, to cities, to radio telescopes is highly probable. You know how your neurons inside your brain don't know that they're inside your brain. They don't know that they're part of you. Now, could we be inside of an alien and not know where we are? Well, I, uh, I don't think your neurons know anything. 
Right. Yeah. Maybe your brain know knows. You. Your brain knowing something is a is well, I think a they know is how a to function. They know. Hey, we're going to. No, they don't. No, 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 no. But what no suggests you've got some overarching concept of something, really? which is a systems property of the brain. It's not an individual neuron property. Any well, any more? Brains know things. Brains know things. But cells cells not. Cells not. Really? Yeah. Because otherwise you say you say well a cell doesn't know and a cell knows this so okay does does the DNA in it does that protein know something if the protein knows it does that atom is know something over there is there oxygen over here am I getting a cell thing in here is it too acidic here oh like it can that? sense things it can respond to things it processes things well you're not a Barbara McClintockian who says that every part of an organism is as much an organism as the whole of mm, definitely not okay. So you think that English is in a different, higher level of quirkiness than life? It's extremely contingent upon a whole string of um, accidents in history. And life is not? Life may be, in which case we're just here. But there are lots of people that think that life arises as a consequence of the chemistry of planets and that that sort of chemistry is likely to happen a number of times. You know? What is the chance? that on another world there was a group of people speaking Anglo-Saxon and another group of people speaking Norman French and one of them happened to invade the other. You know, I mean, it just seems incredibly contingent. Um, In a way that you don't envision for the origin of life on this planet. If that, that could well not be. If it, if it is, then, then there's very unlikely to be life anywhere else. But I say the the hypothesis is that because life is a chemical process, and there seems to be some link to the chemistry that goes on in rocks and early earth and so on, and therefore that might happen somewhere else, then life might happen somewhere else. Now, what do you think are students or the public's biggest misconceptions about the question, are we alone? Um, I suspect that it's already been answered. Um, so they think that it has been answered, yes, we've seen aliens and they're here on the So there's a bunch that think we've already seen aliens, we've seen them in the sky or they're among us or they've, you know, there's a face on Mars and all the rest. There's a bunch that have seen too many movies and think, aren't there aliens out there? I thought they were, I thought Matt Damon found them or something. Mm -hmm. um, and I suspect there's a group that see all these slightly overexcited announcements you see in the press, the latest spacecraft has found, you know, hydrogen on Celadus, and that could be in foodstuffs for uh, microbes living, and they misinterpret that, because they're somewhat overenthusiastic, misinterpret that, saying, oh, we found life on Enceladus. Mm -hmm. 